when the heat of summer arrives, it puts a strain not just on us gardeners, but on our plants as well. They're having to pump enough water to stay healthy when temperatures sometimes reach into the triple digits. Well, we always say at the Extension Office that three things that make the phone ring are trees, turf, and tomatoes. And trees are certainly a big source of calls and concerns that people have. How much should you water your trees? Well, I'm going to be talking about that today, both established trees and then we'll talk about newly planted trees. And the watering regime for those is quite different. When it really gets hot and plants start to stress, we see symptoms like wilting or leaf yellowing or leaf drop. Sometimes we even see leaf scorch where portions of a leaf start to die out. Now a lot of times the scorch symptoms are related to bacteria that get into the plumbing of the leaf and plug it up, not allowing water to reach all areas of the leaf. When that happens, that can cause the scorching or the dieback. It can happen in bacteria in the leaf or even sometimes within the plant itself. But today we're going to focus on those problems that are related to a lack of water in the soil and how we alleviate that by watering properly. I want to first of all start off by saying that with established trees, we're just looking at rescue watering. Once the tree has been in the ground three, three years, or if it was a very, very large tree when it was planted, maybe five years, that tree is well established, and it's got roots reaching way out in all directions, and we don't have to spray our drinking water on it every day to keep it alive. In fact, we wait until it's maybe gone without rain for, let's say, two weeks or four weeks, depending on how much heat is outside, or what the temperatures are, in other words, before we give it a good deep soaking rescue treatment. Trees don't need to be watered every other day or even weekly through the summer season once they're established to keep them alive. One of the things that's important to realize is where tree roots are. A lot of times you see diagrams where the top part of the tree and the bottom part of the tree are sort of like mirror images. That is not how roots grow. Roots grow in a wide, very thin relatively to the size of the tree, pancake of soil, and not many roots reach down below about 12 inches deep. So the upper foot of soil contains about 90% of a tree's root system. Now that varies a little with tree species and the types of soil, clay versus a sand and so on, where the water table maybe is or some underlying features. But in general, rather than think of your tree as that top bottom mirrored diagram, Think of it as a pancake with a stalk of broccoli sitting right in the middle. That's basically how a tree is built. So when we water, we want to focus our watering on the top 10 to 12 inches of soil. That's the area we want to give a good deep soaking to. Not a shallow wetting that barely goes down, but a good deep soaking. You can tell when you've watered your soil well like that by using a screwdriver, a long handled screwdriver, and pushing it into the soil. When you push a screwdriver into the soil and it goes all the way down in without a problem, that's a sign that the soil is moist. If the soil is dry, if you go down through some moist soil and then you hit dry soil, it'll feel like you hit concrete. Now you may try different areas because you may have just hit a root, but in general, that's a good way to tell how your tree moisture content is in the soil. So what we want to do is we want to wet to that depth. We also want to focus our wetting in the area within the drip line of the tree. Now a tree system's roots reach far and wide, much further than the drip line of the tree. In fact, they've found pecan roots two and a half times the distance or the width of the tree out in all directions. Uh, some species have even been measured out to three times or more the height of the, or the width of the tree uh, out from the trunk. So when you stand at the trunk of the tree and you look out to the drip line, that area underneath the drip line, if, it, if the tree were an umbrella, where the water would be dripping, or if you want to think of it this way, go out at noontime and look at the shadow of the tree when the sun is overhead, that's where we put most of our rescue water. Now it's great if you want to water a wider area than that, but that ends up costing a lot of money and, and sometimes you don't have access to it because your tree roots on an established shade tree in your yard are reaching well into your neighbor's yard and in some cases into the neighbor on the other side's yard as they go out in all areas in search of water. With that kind of root system, they have a very extensive bank account of moisture in the soil. Trees pump a lot of water each day. Uh, some AgriLife Extension research a number of years ago 
found that a peach tree can pump about 40 gallons a day out of its leaves. Well, if a peach tree can do that, think about a giant pecan tree or some other shade tree in your yard. That's a lot of water. Well, we don't have to apply all that water. We don't have to be the one who supplies all the water for the tree. Nature takes care of most of that. We're just there to rescue it in a bind. Uh, and it, it's not just a matter of tree survival. If it was just tree survival, uh, we would hardly ever water if at all. Uh, but when it comes to trees looking good, staying healthy, uh, having that health to fend off problems, a little supplemental watering here and there is good. It takes about one inch of water to wet to that depth. Now, clay soils, an inch won't wet as deep as it will on a sandy soil as the water moves on through. But in general, as a guide, we want to apply about an inch. Now, if you have uh, turf around the tree like this, you may even go a little higher than that because the turf's going to get a lot of that water. Some of it's going to be in the thatch and on the leaves and evaporate away. Uh, but at least a good inch of water to give that good deep soaking that we're looking for when you want when you have to water. So just remember for your established trees, unless they're showing some particular problem signs, uh, you probably should hardly ever have to water. And if you do, it's just that infrequent rescue treatment. Now I want to talk a little bit about newly planted trees because that's a whole another thing. We're going to start off with a tree that was just put in all the way through, let's say, the first year of its life. When you purchase a tree, depending on what size of container you're purchasing it in, this size or something even much larger, all the roots are in this cylinder of soil. So in the nursery, that tree was getting watered at least twice a day, in some cases three times a day, in uh, southern nurseries keeping that tree not just alive, they're trying to get it to grow fast so it can be large and you can buy it and they can make some money off the tree. Well, when it's being watered like that every day, that whole root system is wound up in the tree. Now remember we said tree roots can reach two and a half times the height or the width of the tree in all directions. So if you have a tree that's in a pot like this, and let's say that tree you bought is about so high, well, that tree would like to have roots way out in all directions, but they're all wound up in that pot. So when you put it in the ground, you've got to water where the roots are. It doesn't help to water where the roots aren't. And so even if your soil around it is moist, in a day it's going to pump that uh, cylinder of soil and roots dry. And that's why we start off watering daily. Now it's, it's somewhat of an art rather than a science as to just how to water these young trees. Because if it's cool temperatures, you don't need to water every day. There's no demands, especially if the leaves are off the tree in the winter. But as we get into the growing season, which is where I'm focusing my comments, and it's warmed up, that's when we need to get the water in there. But we don't want to overwater and create waterlogged conditions, because those are deadly as well. So if you plant in a clay soil, that planting hole can sort of become an underground bathtub that if we excessively water, the water table rises up in that clay hole and your tree roots are essentially underwater, which is really bad for them. So I try to dig down three or four inches and kind of feel the soil, and that's the number one gauge for how often you should water. But just remember that you're digging down where there are roots, not out outside that root cylinder where there's not, because the soil is going to be moist out there. It's where the roots are that we're most concerned about. Uh, so we're going to focus today on trees that are, let's say, less than about two and a half inches in diameter. You know, something definitely less than a, than a tennis ball, but e even a couple of inches in diameter and on down, because that's what most people bring home for the nursery to plant. If you have trees that are much larger than that, four inches or larger in diameter, then everything I'm saying gets doubled or more for those kind of trees, and that's, that's a whole other thing. But for most of the trees that, that homeowners go home and plant, uh, less than two and a half inches in diameter, what we want to do is put about two to three gallons of water on per inch of trunk diameter. So let's say we have a one inch tree. The trunk is about like a uh, broom or mop handle. Uh, that's one inch, so that's two to three gallons of water for that one inch of trunk diameter every time we water. And we want to soak that water down into the soil. So if it's really, really hot, you're going to be watering daily for about two weeks. About two weeks of daily watering and wetting that soil, making sure we're not creating an underwater table that's soggy, but it's going to take that to just su supply that tree. Remember, in the nursery, it was getting watered two or three times a day in some cases, and so 
in your ground, you're going to have to continue that until it gets roots out in the soil around it. So daily, about two to three gallons per inch of trunk diameter. And then after about two weeks, we can back off and begin to wean that tree off as it begins to get roots out a little bit further. And we go to about every other day for about the first month of the tree's life, all to up to maybe two months of the tree's life. After a couple of months of being helped along like that, we can then back off to once a week with a good soaking. Just remember that our goal when we plant a tree is to hang a hammock in it as fast as we can. So if you are wanting that tree to grow fast, which I know you are, uh, it's not just what does it take to keep it alive, but what does it take to cause it to thrive? And water is the number one thing. People often concern themselves with fertilizing trees, and that's a whole other topic. Uh, and fertilizer can be helpful, but nothing is as important as water. If you do no fertilizing at all and water right, you're going to have a very good tree, unless you just have some really serious nutrient problems uh, in the soil. So watering it is really number one. Uh, again, uh, as we begin to move that water area out further and further, uh, the tree roots are moving out as we do that, and we wet a larger and larger area. Now, one thing that I like to do is put a tree uh, in the ground and put a berm of soil around it, a berm that is a, essentially a donut of soil about four to six inches high so that it can hold a considerable amount of water. That way, when you put the water hose in that berm, it all goes straight down. If you've ever watered with a water hose before, you can see the soil wet and it's puddling and you think, okay, I've really wet it. And then you go and dig down and you've barely wet it a half inch to an inch at the most. But with that berm, when you fill it up with water, all of that water goes down into the soil. And so depending on what size of tree you put in, let's say it was one like this, uh, the berm should be about to the outer edge of that. It could be a little wider than that. In fact, it could be a lot wider. The watering you do out here isn't very important uh, to the tree when the roots are right here but those roots are going to begin to go out. So sometimes I'll start with a smaller berm and then move it out a little bit. That's time, labor, and most people aren't going to get around to doing that. And so if you would just build a berm about maybe two feet out from the trunk of the tree, all around the tree, so a four foot wide berm, and if you go even wider, the tree will be even happier. Uh, but that berm allows you a good deep soaking because everything you put in the, in the berm is going to have to go down into this root ball until that tree is able to get roots out into the soil around the tree. And that's really important to take those new trees and to take care of them that way. Now the best time to plant a tree is in the fall. That is that is the best planting season. We have very mild winters in Texas. Even even further north in Texas, relatively speaking, our, our winters are fairly mild. And so uh, we can get roots growing during a lot of the year. When the soil temperature is 50 degrees or so even, those roots are, are able to begin to grow and establish. So a fall planted tree is going to be much more ready for the next summer than a tree that you wait until April or May to put in the ground and then summer hits before it's ready. You can plant any month of the year. You can plant in the middle of summer, but Getting that water right is more difficult because, again, that tree's root system has not even begun to expand. The demands are really high on that tree, and so you got to get it really right. It's better to plant in the fall or the winter, being also a very, very good time to plant your trees. And I'm talking about container-grown. Bare root is, is a late, mid to late winter planting as well uh, to get that tree established really well. So the other thing we want to talk about is mulching. If trees could talk and you ask a tree, uh, how close do you want grass to you? It would say, I don't even want to be able to see grass. I want to be in a forest where my leaves fall on the ground and they rot and they enrich the soil and there's not a blade of grass within sight. Well, in our landscapes, we kind of have a different goal in mind. So in order to get them to cooperate together, for a young tree, if you want to get it to grow fast, again, remember, if you want to hang that hammock, you want to give it a mulched area as wide as you can stand to look at. Now, if you can at least get, you know, two or three feet on all sides of that tree, or uh, let's say as wide as the branch canopy of the tree, and a little wider even, because a young tree has essentially uh, very little branch canopy, 
uh, and keep that well mulched. And don't replace the mulch, just add to it. As it decomposes, you add more to the surface. You can spend money on beautiful bark mulch, or you can just go get your neighbor's leaves and your leaves and use those. That's how it's done in the forest. But the goal is to keep those roots mulched. It prevents erosion, prevents crusting, raindrops hit the ground and percolate in, those leaves decompose. About three-fourths of the nutrients that a tree takes up during the year are in its leaves. And so when you put those on the ground and let them rot back into the soil, you are also, in addition to mulching, you're feeding the soil very gradually over a very long time. So that's that forest floor environment that, three, that trees thrive in. So as wide of a mulched area as you can stand, the tree is going to say, make it wider, make it wider, and your aesthetics are going to say, that's starting to look weird. So you decide how wide you want it to be, but mulch is really important. Now, I've talked a lot about watering trees so much, you know, putting two to three gallons per inch and watering daily for the first two weeks and then beginning to water every other day for the first month or two and then going to weekly. Uh, we're talking there about hot weather watering. When we move into the cool season, this changes dramatically. The, the most stressful time for trees here in Texas is the June, July, and August time, uh, and even reaching into the early weeks of September sometimes. Uh, when we look at May and September, it's not quite so bad. The heat is not what it can be here in the Texas summer, and so we can cut our watering at about half, and then as we get into uh, April and October, you shouldn't have to be watering at all except if you put a new tree in the ground. I said fall planting is important, so when you put that tree in the ground in October, let's say you do it in early October, mid-October, whenever, uh, you're going to still be watering. But just think about how hot it is, and above all, use that hand tool we come equipped with, our hands, our fingers, reach down in the soil and feel how moist it is, engage it that way. I realize that some listeners have very sandy soils, some have very clay soils. You may be in north or south parts of the state or east where it rains or west where it doesn't. Uh, so we're trying to package a whole lot of things into one statement. But if you'll follow those principles, you will find that you can have a very fast growing tree that does very, very well. I hope that's been helpful for you. Uh, I want to give a shout out to all the county horticulturists and the specialists who help with the Aggie Horticulture Facebook Live and have been answering your questions today as well. Uh, we thank you for listening and we look forward in coming weeks. Remember, we're here every Wednesday and every Friday and uh, we look forward to other topics that I think you'll be very interested in. So thanks for listening.